Hello, welcome back. It's been a while, hasn't it? So, I haven't been travelling, as you can see, a lot in the past few months or so. I've been mostly doing my family tree. So, I'm sort of tying in two things with this recent travel. I will be showing you around St Helens, which is uh, a town historically part of Lancashire, now part of Merseyside. It has... Um, a short but significant history uh, in coal mining, glassworks and chemical works as well. And it started off as a very small settlement and then it grew. And between 1801 and 1861, the census is recorded that the population increased by about 300%. Now, most of the people in my family were either born in St Helens or worked in St Helens. A lot of them were coal miners. There was an influx of Irish immigrants after the uh, the famine that came to Liverpool. Some came to St Helens or some moved on to New York. Um, but in, in my family, they, they settled for St Helens. There are a few things in St Helens. Um, as I say, it's a small town, but there's, uh, there's a few things to see. So I thought, why not take the camera along with me? and show you around while I also do some private um, family research for myself. Yeah, hopefully you enjoy this uh, small video, uh, so let's start with the intro. St Helen started life as a settlement around a chapel dedicated to St Ellen, a founder of the Church of Wales. The chapel itself was at a crossroads between Ormskirk, Warrington, Prescott and Ashton. Indeed, coal would become a major part of St Helen's history. And at its height, in the 1900s, numerous coal mines employed over a quarter of working age males in St Helen's. This was the site of a former bank with a 130 year history. Parr's bank was set up by a sugar boiler called Joseph Parr in Warrington. Once a side hustle, medicine became big business for the Beecham family. This impressive building was the company's headquarters. From here their famous Beecham's pills were produced. They were, like many 19th century over-the-counter pills, advertised as a cure-all but their ingredients of ginger, aloe and soap were actually useful as a laxative. Beecham's eventually expanded and later merged with SmithKline, who then later merged with Glaxo Welcome to become Glaxo SmithKline, a major pharmaceutical company. While Beecham's pills no longer exist, the name continues in the Beecham's cold and flu tablets. St Helens had many pioneers along with Mr Beecham. St Helens was also home to Pilkington's Glass. Pilkington's Glass formed in the early 1800s and would later produce glass for cars and invent Pilkington Active, a self-cleaning glass. Reflection Court, now a block of flats, was the Pilkington headquarters. The world's first continuous glass furnace stands here. This furnace was built in 1887. It is now part of World of Glass, a museum documenting the town's glass history and the story of glass as a whole.
Next in the museum is the Sankey Canal, also known as the Hotties, due to the warm water that was pumped into it from the Pilkington Glass Factory. According to the blue plaque nearby, this canal was the first canal built in the Industrial Revolution Age in England. There isn't really any access to this one, but this is the Cannington Shore Company's bottle shop. The Cannington Shore Company produced thousands of glass bottles for water and other products from 1886 to 1918. Its cone-shaped furnace became a useful air raid shelter during the 1940s. But on the grounds of a former glass factory now stands St Helens' most famous sports club, not a football club, but a rugby club, and that is St Helens Rugby Football Club. They compete in the highest division of the British Rugby League pyramid, and they have won the division 10 times, along with the predecessor of it 7 times. They had 13 Challenge Cups, 2 World Club Challenge Cups, and 35 other titles. I concluded my day here at St Helens' Cemetery. Within it is Windleshaw Chantry. It is St Helens' oldest structure and dates to 1415. A chapel would have once stood attached, where mass and prayers for the dead would be held. Now, if you'll excuse me, there are some people I've been meaning to see.